I'm Emma Goldswell and welcome to FN Hormones, a podcast about perimenopause and beyond. I say beyond because there are so many hormone related things that can happen when you hit say 35 plus. So if you're listening to this and your symptoms turn out not to be peri, then don't worry, you are welcome too. Now, I'm going to be chatting about all of this and more with my mates. Helen Brown is also the producer of Effin Hormones, Terry Sweeney and Bina Katani. And after this episode, you'll hear from some great guests, including Sue Devaney from Corrie, no less, who I'm really excited about. Right, time to introduce the gang. Let me introduce you to Helen, Terry and Bina. Who's going first? Hello, hello. Oh, I knew you'd hello, go hello. first, Helen. Of course, I'm going to dive in. Hello, I'm Helen Brown. Effing Hormones was my idea. And one time we were all sat around having a Zoom and a little drinky, not that long ago, actually. And I just said, look, how many women have experienced perimenopause and they didn't even know what it was? They hadn't heard of mm-hmm. it before. And that, that's what happened to me. And that's what's happened to loads of my mates. And I just thought, I'm angry about that fact, actually. I don't feel like women are prepared. And so I wanted to channel that anger into something positive and bring women together and talk about it and make it okay to talk about. And that's why I asked you all to come and do a podcast with me about perimenopause. Well, it's very kind of you because you've got three beautiful, angry, middle-aged women to join you. (laughs) (laughs) Less less of the angry. (laughs) (laughs) Go on then, Terry, introduce yourself. Yeah, actually, I think the angry might be quite apt. (laughs) No, I thought older people were the ones who got menopause. I didn't think it would ever affect me at some point, but I didn't even know what perimenopause meant, but that there is such thing as perimenopause. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to talk to a group of like-minded women about what's going on with my body and my brain and everything else around me because sometimes you feel like you're losing the plot. So, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be uh, to be part of this. It's quite exciting. It is. Go on, Bina, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Bina Katani and what on <laughs> earth is all this about? Uh, I was telling my friend that we were doing this yesterday and she said, Perry Menopause, is that a singer from the 1950s? And I thought, well, yeah, it does sound, it does sound a bit like that. But uh, to be honest, there's, I've had, you know, for the last few years, odd things going on. And I'd heard the phrase perimenopause banded about only quite recently. But it's only when I sat down with you girls on a Zoom and we started talking about it that we realised how little we did know about it. Mm. And so, yeah, just the curiosity in me and and sort of what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and, and the sort of the brain fog and all these different symptoms that are just starting to creep in now. Uh, so I thought, yeah, why not? I'll join the fun, see what we learn. It's not just me who thought that perimenopause and menopause was literally just about vaginal dryness then. So I just want to get that out of there. It has to get in there somewhere. The only reason Terry has said that is because she was desperate to use the phrase vaginal dryness. (laughs) She's so bloody cheeky. Nobody wants to talk about that. Well, no, talk about what you want to talk about. (laughs) No, I've got it out of the way now. Anyway, cards on the table, even though I'm hosting this podcast, I'm probably the most clueless person here, even though I've been going through it the longest. So I've been uh, having symptoms for five years and this is how clueless I am and how out of touch my own body I am. I've only realised the difference between perimenopause and menopause through reading through Helen's notes earlier today. (laughs) (laughs) Just as we're about to record our first episode. I love that. So yeah, there is a difference then, right? Uh, we'll come on to that in a minute, though. But first of all, uh, should we explain how we met? Because, um, I mean, I'm so old, I've forgotten. <laughs> Helen, can you remember? <laughs> we know each other through work. So I, I worked with you, didn't I, directly. And then I met Terry in the smoking shelter and we became friends. And Terry, I said this to you before, but I've always admired the fact that you said this to me. You, you said, right, I think you're really cool. Can I come out and go for drinks with you and, and your mates? And I thought, Do you know what? I really like that because yeah. I wouldn't have had the courage... I would have had a bit of social anxiety around doing that. Anyway. Oh, I did have social anxiety, but, <laughs> but <you laughs> I still did, did it. I, I still thought it was super cool. So I just thought, yeah, and I liked you anyway. So, yeah, I was having quite a fun time with colleagues at work and you came out to some of those and you introduced us to Bina. And we ended up pulling together a drinking club, which makes us sound like <laughs> raging alcoholics but was basically us lot meeting up about once a month, wasn't it, for drinkies after work. Yeah. And it was yeah. lovely. yeah. Are we all non-smokers now as well? I never was a smoker. Well, listen, right, let me tell you, if you told me five and a half years ago that I would be teetotal, gluten-free, non-smoking, 
low histamine diet following meditating yoga warrior, right? I would have told you to fuck off. <laughs> are, you, are you going on an ayahuasca retreat next year? Oh my God. <laughs> All I'm saying is when we're finally allowed to get together indoors, I am never inviting you to a dinner party because you are the fussiest bastard ever, gluten, <laughs> gluten-free, gluten only eats about five things on the planet that are plant-based. Oh, my God, no. It's not happening. Oh, uh, hey, don't, well, honestly. Uh, listen, do you not think... I feel like a complete dickhead, obviously. Do you know what? Th- those are the things that I've had to do in order to maintain my health and my sanity throughout this mm. whole perimenopausal journey. Mm. Okay. Well, this might be a good opportunity then for you to explain exactly, you know, why you wanted to do the podcast. You said a little bit at the beginning, but um, anything else that you wanted to add on that? Yeah, I mean, I just think that um, I may not be perimenopausal. This is the whole thing, right? I found out something recently that I think I have something called histamine intolerance, which is related to your hormones. There's a relationship between estrogen dominance and, and histamine. So my symptoms have been cyclical and I, w- I was tracking them for like two years. I was going backwards and forwards to my GP surgery. And this will be a familiar story to you if you're experiencing perimenopause and you don't know what the heck's going on. But it was cyclical. So it was like, well, it's got to be perimenopause. I've done hundreds of blood tests. Nothing's ever come out of the blood tests. And I've been told I'm too young. This started when I was 41. Yeah, well, see, that's bollocks, isn't it? Because I started at 45, so you could... And, you know, it happens, doesn't it? People do start early sometimes. Well, it can be up to 10 years before your menopause. 10 mm. years <gasps> perimenopause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. where we explain what menopause is and what perimenopause well, is? probably should, shouldn't we, really? So, basically, perimenopause is up to 10 years before your menopause. <laughs> your face is a picture, Em. Yeah. And then menopause is considered after one year after your last period. So your period stopped, then a year goes past, and then it's menopause. So full disclosure, Mm. I have... We're talking about periods to friends, don't it? But that's what we're doing. I haven't had a period for over two years now. So it's a distant memory, and it's the only good fucking thing about (laughs) the menopause (laughs) that I can save money on tampons and not have to worry about that. As we are speaking, I am having a hot flush, and I'm going to have to go and get my fan. Go and get your fan. Why have I not brought my fan to this meeting? Good God, I'm an absolute amateur. Hang on a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back. She has, you she's, see, I've gone no, beetroot. she's gone pink. I've actually gone beetroot. Mate, go and get Look yourself sorted out. Come on. Yeah. This is going to happen. I can just see Emma there, like, trying to cool down. Oh, bless her. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to keep my fan away from the microphone. Can you hear it? <laughs> this is my hands-free one that also has disco flashing oh, no lights. Way. Look at that. Shut up. You can That's have a disco amazing. in your own bedroom. It's glowing bright green, bright red, bright blue. That's wow. amazing. That's really Put it there, cool. you can hear it. Oh, yes. <laughs> that doesn't sound dodgy at all, Emma. Okay. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Carry on, Bina. What were you saying? Oh, so, so I got diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome. And actually, there's a lot of symptoms that seem to overlap. So I don't know if I'm peri either. I don't know if I'm just experiencing various symptoms of polycystic ovary syndrome or if it is indeed perimenopause so i'm well whatever's coming doesn't feel that fun obviously dr google scares the shit out of you anytime you put something in you just don't feel very informed no about where one thing might start and one might thing might end which is kind of why we call this effing hormones as well wasn't it rather than anything specifically about perimenopause or menopause because it's all hormonal and, and also, no one bloody tells you anything. No one tells you anything. I met someone recently who was just really annoyed with their mother because they said, why the hell did she not warn me? She must have gone through this. Mm. And I think the same mm. about my own mother. She is from the generation, and I'm slightly from the generation, of just grinning it and bearing it and just crack on with it. I have literally done that for five years. I have sweated. I've had night sweats. I've passed out on public transport with my dizzy spells. I have gone absolutely psychotic at my girlfriend you know I've just had all these symptoms that I didn't even know what was going on and just grin and bed it for five years and now I've suddenly realized I'm menopausal and not even perimenopausal and I only found that out yesterday oh we'll let we'll still let you join in Ems don't worry about it (laughs) (laughs) yeah but that's the whole point isn't it like you said Bina that's why we called it effing hormones because the fact is there are so many different things that can go on for women at this time of life but listen let me point out some positives Bina because I know that I'm not much fun at a party nowadays, right? (laughs) But I 
am more in tune with my body than I ever have been in my whole life because I've spent most of my life living just in my head, right? I've been one of those busy, busy, busy head people. And I have worked hard over the past five years to learn and understand more about my body because I've had to otherwise I wouldn't have been able to function because I've been in pain otherwise right but you know what it's no bad thing for me to be 46 and looking towards the next stage of my life and further and be getting fit whereas before Christ before all of this I was like you know half a bottle of wine guzzling sat slump watching the telly on a Wednesday night girl and I've had to work so hard to overcome this stuff that I feel that I'm going to be in really good nick do you know what I mean? Mm. Now yeah. you're basically Madonna, aren't you? Just doing <laughs> yoga and hardly eating anything. I love it. <laughs> Sari, what's your beef then? Well, I'm, I'm okay. The thing is, I'm okay. And, but I, was, I wasn't even sure I was in perimenopause at the beginning of it all. But I was getting really, really, really bad migraines. And they were so debilitating. I was literally spending days in bed. And it was like, what the hell's going on? What, what, what can I do to stop these? So much so I really thought I was having a brain tumour at one point. Oh and then God. I think a bit like Emma, I had um, I collapsed a couple of times and I had a seizure on the second time I collapsed. But a friend of mine who's a doctor, she was like, well, actually, that you can collapse and you can have seizures from a lack of hormones. Anyway, in all this time, I was being investigated for all sorts, but they ruled out anything dodgy. The doctor came back, she said, your oestrogen level is really dipping. She thinks that was what was causing the migraine. So I went on HRT at that point. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's been like the like a magic pill but it's made me feel a lot better and a lot of things I didn't realize were perimenopause symptoms have all started to fit into place like Mm. itchy legs waking up at night feeling really hot and sweaty Mm -hmm. irritability feeling like I've got palpitations all the time all these things were all on a very long list of the symptoms of perimenopause that I'd never seen before and I can't blame my mum because I remember my mum literally smashing up the kitchen in in one of her (laughs) menopausal kind of rages she's been saying to me for years menopause menopause get HRT and I was like oh mum I'm not old enough but I thought it was something that you did in in your mid 50s that you went and you got HRT when you were 55. I think we are fortunate to live in an age now where discussions are had. I had a front row seat to my mum's menopause. There's a really strong history of early menopause in my family as well. I mean, the fact that we even were talking about it. I don't know if when my mum was going through it that even she talked about it with her mates. Mm. Like you said, Emma, it was just this grin and bear it, just crack on thing. And I don't even know if culturally there was a thing as well. This seems a good time to point out that the most useful information that I have had throughout my whole five years of experiencing also the crippling migraines and muscle aches and, and, you know, just bad shit, quite frankly. The most useful information that I have got has been from other women in groups, on Facebook groups. And I just wanted to, with this, draw on the collective power of women coming together, supporting each other, sharing their experiences making it okay to talk about and just going look we don't think this is good enough so let's share what we've got and help each other out and that's what effing hormones is all about exactly so we're not experts i'm definitely not one and uh, i'm definitely not a doctor and i'm learning along with you guys and as well as bitching about our symptoms we're going to be doing some mad features that helen's designed and created and none of the rest of us fully understand (laughs) Um, (laughs) i think that's fair isn't it F in hormones. Chatting perimenopause in public. So what of it? The first feature is called Perry Trumps. Helen, please do explain further. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because Terry's looking away in disgust. I love oh, this. Oh, I really, really, really think we she should change the name. She hates it. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what it's called? Perry Trumps. One of my top... Making you think of fanny farts, isn't it, Terry? <laughs> to be honest, that's what it is. <laughs> Someone had to say it. <laughs> God. Perry Trumps, right? Think top Trumps, but for Perry symptoms. Yes. But also we've got a riff on Trumps because digestive issues has been a massive issue for me. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Basically, what I did was I got all the 34 symptoms of menopause mm. and uh, put them on a grid and then... Listen, I have to say here, there is no medical backing up to this whatsoever. I just did a bit of a Google to try and find out which ones were rarer and which ones were more common. So the common ones have got a low score and the oh. rarer ones that I could find on Google have got a higher score. So basically, you tot up 
your Perry Trump score and we see who's highest on the scoreboard. So, for example, the hot flush only scores you one. But see, that's unfair, Helen, because some of them are extreme <laughs> and some of them are just quite pathetic and you don't even have to take your jumper off. So, I mean, anyway. Sorry, darling. Are you feeling hard done by? Yeah. And then irregular periods. Well, I mean, I wish. That's no chance of even having the sniff of one. Um, oh, I'm glad to see vaginal dryness makes a return on here, though. That's good, especially for <laughs> <Terry>. <laughs> That would score you a five if you had that, Terry. Right, OK, I'll just have to do some adding up with my calculator because I can't do sums. Well, listen, I'm sorry if you feel shortchanged by the hot flush thing. The reason why I gave it a, a one is because any time you mention this stuff to people, they just go, oh, hot flush. And they think they literally yeah. think that's it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's yeah, not but not it. many, not many women have the hot. Not everybody no, I've has never the had hot a, I've never had I've a hot never, flush. I've never had a hot flush. Yeah. What? I haven't been the right temperature since 2005. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one that I had that I didn't know was a thing until I just saw it was yeah. burning mouth syndrome. Have you got that? I've had it about two years ago, two or three years ago. Yeah, and it's really quite. It's horrible. It just literally feels like your mouth is on fire. It just feels like your mouth is on fire wow. constantly. And you, you feel like you drink, you suck on ice cubes. It's really hard to explain, but it, yeah, it just it makes you feel like your tongue and your mouth is on fire all the time. And I've I, never and, heard And I'm pleased to either. see it scored a 10. Yes. <laughs> Very rare. I, I'm just on the fourth row now. Can I just ask what stress wheeze are? Oh, that made me laugh. <laughs> what does it mean? I did about four stress wheeze before record this recording, but then I think that was a combination of excitement. But then I have I have had a child as well, so you know. It is vaginal dryness as well. So everyone thinks vaginal dryness oh, is no, about. I know. I know. I said right. I wasn't going to discuss this, this. <laughs> but that it's not just about sex. That's about um, losing control of your bladder and your um, no, losing control of it. And that's oh. a lack of oestrogen in your undercarriage. You're basically you a saboteur, Terry. You've been going on with us, lot for weeks, right? I don't want to go on about vaginal dryness. <laughs> you just right, keep... You've hit the hat trick now. You've mentioned it three <laughs> times. <laughs> I'm just embracing it. Come on, girls. I'm, yay, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> yay. She's casted I... off the convent girl shackles. <laughs> Can I just ask about body odour as well? Yeah. Um, now, that's getting a Trump score of eight. OK. But, uh, what do you mean by body odour? What's supposed to happen? Do you just start being a bit whiffy? Emma, do we need a little chat? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're all just going, thank God I'm not in that flat with Emma with her hot flushing and oddies, body odours. Have you totted it up yet? Yeah, OK. Do you want me to tell you my score? What's your scores on the doors? My scores on the doors, I'm going to give myself a 62. Wow. Oh, wow. Right, on, anyone then. else? Has anyone else totted up? 57. 57, Bina. Oh, I haven't done all of them because I know that I do have all of them, but I've just done the main, the main. No, ones. do all of them. Do all of them. You can't okay. have every single symptom, surely. Not all of them. I mean, there's what forty odd, but I've pretty much got a lot of them. Shall I tell you what my score is? It was a bit of a shocker earlier on. Seventy-seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I'm I was write a bit these like, down. oh shit! No wonder I'm a teetotaling, gluten-free, low histamine, meditating yoga warrior. Crikey, O'Reilly. I thought Bina was going to win with her burning I mouth did. syndrome. That's a, that's the top of the top chart score, 10. Sh shall I tell Quite you why I, I got a 10? Gum problems. I lost two teeth. What? what? Honestly, I've lost two teeth throughout this. Yeah. Let's not go into this story because there was a horrible dentist and then there was a lovely dentist and people don't want to hear about what happens with horrible dentists today. So. No. Anyway, there mm. you go. That's why I've got 77. It's mental, isn't it? Pretty Gosh. Hell. I had no idea that that was a menopausal symptom. I know. Well, I bloody knew. <laughs> <laughs> you do now. I think the, the one that is possibly the most disruptive to life, I mean, feel free to argue this, though, only scores a score of three, and that's disrupted sleep. Ugh. Well, again, it's quite common, isn't it? Do you think we need to rejig this so it's like <laughs> the most crap, how badly it affects your life? They're, They're all, all pretty, pretty crap. crap. Yeah. No yeah. one's going to go, yay, my teeth are falling out and my hair. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on then, we are going to be doing the A to Z of peri and menopause. Now, this is where you get to hear about all the different aspects of perimenopause or menopause as we work ourselves 
through the alphabet. And uh, today we're starting with A because that's how the alphabet works, apparently. And uh, we're going to be talking about antidepressants. Now, this is a subject very close to my heart. I was prescribed antidepressants in October this year. And ironically, just because it worked out this way and tragically, I was prescribed antidepressants the day after my sister died. Now, for years, I'd been going through awful symptoms of the menopause. I'd not been able to sleep. I was like having to change my pajamas in the middle of the night. And then the mood swing started as well. It, you know, it was, it was pretty unbearable. And all the way through all of my symptoms, my sister, who had breast cancer, said, but you can't have HRT, Emma, because she'd read all of this stuff about the study that said HRT could be linked to breast cancer. So she'd always put this thought in my head, Emma, just put up with the shit you're putting up with because you cannot get breast cancer like your sister because she went through hell. So I just never did it. And then I started reading more and more about HRT and realised how discredited this um, survey had been, actually. I think we're going to talk about it in a bit, aren't we, Helen? Mm -hmm. So and I, towards the end of Abigail's life, I managed to convince her that actually HRT might be the way that I should go. So I rang the doctors going, right, I've decided I am going to have HRT. Let's look at the possibilities. And then they just denied it me anyway. After finally, after all of those years, I've gone through four years of suffering and then went, I finally won it. And they went, no, what we're going to do is give you antidepressants. So mm -hmm. I just had 10 milligrams of citalopram, which helped a little bit to begin with. Then it didn't. Then recently I went up to 20 milligrams and that worked for a little bit. Now it doesn't. So, but now I'm at the stage where they won't give me any HRT because they say, you've only just gone up to 20 milligrams. You'll have to wait and see if that works before you can finally have HRT. So I'm, and I'm now on a different doctors. I'm just going back and back and back saying, can I please have HRT? So I've asked about three times now and they keep saying, no, have antidepressants. So that's where I am with it, really. Mm. I didn't know that about your sister saying that to you about HRT and that's mm. why you hadn't taken it for such a long time. Yeah. 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 But then when I finally did say, right, I'm ready to do it, I just thought it'd be simple, like, oh, you're clearly menopausal, you'll have some HRT. No, you know, this has been going on for about eight months now, I've just not been given HRT. And, what, and what's their rationale? What are they saying? Well, the rationale was because the main reason I went and said I really need help was because it wasn't just the hot sweats which I put up with, it was the fact of the mood swings. So they were mainly trying to alter my mood by just giving me the antidepressants. That's what they said to me. Shall I talk you through the research that I've done on this? Because I've looked this up um, yeah. the other day. Yeah. Because basically, having been a member of these like Facebook groups that I keep talking about, about perimenopause, this is such... By the way, listen, can you hear my son in the background? Yeah, He's yes. having his yeah. bath. <laughs> is that what he's doing? <laughs> it's my little boy's bath time. So are you guys okay with that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's cute. <laughs> I know. Let me go through my research that I've... Uh, hmm very professionally gone through right so this whole situation about antidepressants versus hrt is massive if you go on the nhs website it explains that you might be offered antidepressants by your gp for hot flushes and for night sweats and it has been found that it can be useful for those things okay mm. it also says on the nhs website that antidepressants may help you if you've been diagnosed with depression now straight away this gets confusing because I've been looking on Dr. Louise Newson's website. Now, if you don't know who she is, she is a GP. She's a menopause specialist. She's often in the media. She has been really raising the profile of wanting women to have more choice when it comes to being able to take HRT. And she's also been training GPs in this area. Now, she says that there's a big difference between the low mood and the anxiety and the panic attacks that you can experience because lowering estrogen and that's different to depression, which some people get, which should be treated with antidepressants. So if mm. you're feeling shit mood wise, and that's happening because of your hormones, then Dr. Louise Newson says antidepressants won't help you. Now, she does agree with the fact that antidepressants can help some women with hot flushes and night sweats. But the low mood that is down to a lack of estrogen, what you need to do is replace the estrogen. So HRT would be more effective for you. OK, mm. now. We don't want to come across like we're slagging off antidepressants here. We're not. But this is such a massive issue. And my personal experience of this and hearing from other women is that antidepressants are just the first thing that GPs offer. And I'm basing that from being a member of this perimenopausal Facebook group. It's got 19,000 women on it now. And women being frustrated because they're not being offered HRT and they want to try it is incredibly common. 
Mm. But the thing is, they do seem reticent, don't they? They did definitely want to give me antidepressants first and they seem reticent about HRT. And is any of that linked to this concern or confusion about the safety of it? That There was that study back in the day, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean, I think that's had massive reverberations for many, many years and that some people haven't caught up with it. I think that's actually quite accepted. So shall I t- let me tell you about this study because this is the mm. big, big thing that made everybody frightened about HRT, mm. OK? So it's called the Women's Health Initiative and it was a, a massive study carried out in the United States. It had um, a couple of clinical trials at least. It was huge. And it started in 1998 and it looked at rates of illness and death in postmenopausal women and the reasons why. Um, now, it's important to point out two things about this study, and you've mentioned one of them already, Emma, and that is that the average age of women in this study was 63, so after mm. menopause. The other thing to point out was that they only tested estrogen-only HRT, or if there was any progesterone involved, it was, it was a minimal amount. So the first results of that study were published in 2002, And it found that amongst these women, they were taking estrogen-only HRT. There was an increased risk of coronary heart disease and breast cancer. And at the same time, which isn't pointed out, um, there was a reduction in osteoporosis and colorectal cancer. Okay, In 2002, that had a massive impact on how HRT was used globally. It just got dropped all over the Mm. world. Loads of women stopped taking it straight away. And then since then, there's been massive debates about it, criticising that study, um, mainly because of the age of the women and also because of the whole issue around it being mainly oestrogen, only HRT. So if you get HRT now, you get combined HRT. That's if you haven't had a hysterectomy. So if you've still got a womb, um, you get combined HRT, which gives you oestrogen for part of the month, and then you have progesterone too. And that's been found, and this is on the NHS website, that there's very little risk of heart disease and stroke when you have combined HRT. Now, experts have been pointing towards the fact that there's evidence to say that if you take HRT when you're younger too, so actually there's an argument to say that taking HRT when you're perimenopausal, that it can actually help prevent osteoporosis, whilst also help relieving the symptoms that you can have when you're perimenopausal. And I think there's a bit of a disconnect between what's happening with GPs here and what's happening with private consultants, because it seems to be the private consultants that are saying yes to more HRT, HRT for younger women, whereas not all GPs seem to have caught up with this latest knowledge. But let me point out, Ems, I mean, it is important to bear in mind that if you do have a family history of breast cancer, it is important to talk about this with a medical expert and weigh up the risks and the benefits. Some women are told it's not a good idea for you to have HRT because of a family history of breast cancer. You can research and research and research this. But ultimately, it's about you educating yourself and weighing up the risks and weighing up the benefits. Mm. Yeah, it's a a really difficult one, isn't it? Because in some respects, I don't want to go against my sister and then have it. But I think towards the end, she had realised that the study have been discredited but I wonder if I'm too old now I'm over 50 when I should have had it before 50 uh, but if people are listening and thinking oh actually I've read up all the benefits and the side effects and actually I really want it what's the best course of action should people just be badgering their M- uh, MPs or GPs <laughs> even <laughs> that was a, your MPs that was as class- well <laughs> that's a classic uh, menopause brain fog wasn't it yes yeah we'll keep that in We'll keep that in. Um, well, OK, so listen, a lot of women complain about the fact that they go to the GP and they get offered a blood test and they have a blood test and it comes back completely normal. So HRT seems to be completely out of the window. Now, there are nice guidelines that state if you are over 45 and you're experiencing perimenopausal or menopausal symptoms, you can be offered HRT with no need for a blood test. So if you go in forewarned or forearmed, you can print off the NICE guidelines and show them and say, look, I want to give it a try. I've got a couple of friends at the moment who are having this debate as well with their GP, and one of them is going back and forth. She's been back, I think, three times. Similar situation to you, Emma. She's been asking for HRT, and yet she's she's having a losing battle with her male GP, but to be honest, it's not all necessarily male GPs. It's female GPs as well who aren't as clued up as some oh, yeah. of the Oh, yeah, I had a female GP GPs. who insisted yeah. that I take oh. antidepressants, yeah. So, I mean, I know we're not, gonna, we're not about bashing GPs, but at the same time, there are nice guidelines for a reason. And yet women are not being listened to. 
So what needs to happen? Do GPs need to be educated more? Like, what needs to happen? Well, I mean, Dr Louise Newson is massively on that mission, you know. And there are lots of other menopause specialists who are coming forward now who are also on that mission. So I think oh. more is happening as women are educating themselves and finding out more about it. But more needs to happen, absolutely. Yes. Effing hormones, making it okay to talk about by talking about it. Do, do, do. Let me introduce you to the Effin. This is our award for those people who have gone above and beyond to help you at this crazy, frustrating and sometimes scary time of your life. And now you get to nominate your Perry or Menno hero. So this is exciting, isn't it? So it could be anybody. It could be a mate who's there for you, even though you've gone through one of your hormonal rages at them. Maybe it's someone in the public eye who's really spoken up, someone that you admire or even just someone that you know that's really gone through the mill and you're just full of admiration of how they coped with it and you just want to give them a bit of a boost. Right, who wants to go first then? Bina, have you got someone in mind? I have. At the risk of sounding cheesy, my effing is Terry. Terry. Oh, Oh, that's so nice. My turn to go red. She's been bloody ace. I've had a pretty crappy year, it's fair to say, but also a lot of the education I've had around all the physical stuff I've going got going on has actually come from Terry, like pointing me to different things on different websites and saying, oh, you probably want to look at this. And yeah, just, yeah, I've learned a oh, lot. So thank that, you very oh, much. mate. That was really nice. But that goes back to what we said in the beginning, doesn't it? That, you know, it's women helping other women, isn't it? Totally, man. Yes. But on that, on that note, my effing would go to my GP because I did actually, I know how lucky I was when I was having all sorts of issues that I had a GP who actually listened to me. She knew her stuff and she passed me on to a website, which was Louise Newson's website. She said, have a look at this website, have a little read. She sent me some details about the options around all the different HRT, if I wanted to take HRT. And she also sent me the information about antidepressants. So my effing would go to my doctor. I don't always get her, but it depends, you know, it's look at the door, isn't it? But she was brilliant and listened to what's going on. So yeah, well done, GP. I'm really pleased that you've mentioned the GP because we don't want to. We really don't want to come across like we're slagging off all GPs. We we love you. We know how hard you yeah. work. We know how time pressured you are. And we know how much crap you've been going through, particularly mm. over the past year or so. So thank you. Hear, hear. Yes. Well hear, said. Hear. Mm-hmm. Go on then, Helen. Who would you like to nominate for your first effing? My <laughs> effing award goes to Anushka Dayton, who is the most fabulous acupuncturist. She is an incredible healer. She's a lovely woman. She was there for me at a time when I was absolutely terrified. I've been told I had fibromyalgia. This was at that point. And I was absolutely terrified. I genuinely don't know what I'd have done without her. I don't think I'd have been able to go to work for about two Mm. years had I not been going to her every week. And you know what? She's a bloody hero because pre-COVID, she was doing all kinds of things like setting up multi-clinics, so that you could access acupuncture cheaply. So she was treating people in, in a hall and going from one to the next. It was all perfectly fine and only charging £15 a go, which, let me tell you, is massively cheap for acupuncture. It averages £45 a go. So, Anushka, you're a hero. Thank you. Lovely. Um, And last but not least, I would like to nominate my dad. And that sounds quite unusual, doesn't it, really? (laughs) It's unusual to give an F in to a man because he has just been so understanding and so thoughtful throughout the whole procedure, the whole trauma of it all, because he had prostate cancer and he had hormone treatment to help his prostate cancer. He has been going through similar symptoms as myself so he has oh. also been having night sweats and also just been having hot flushes and really having to cope with that so he was the one that introduced me to the handheld electric fan hey! so hey! if I hadn't, well done, if I hadn't had that Woo! my life would have been awful the last few years oh, yeah. bless him. so well done to him hooray well, well done, well done. Yeah. Hooray. Well done, well done well. pops Aww. that was Aww. nice I like that I really like that. Yeah, long live the effing. Yeah, forget the Oscars. It's all going to be about the effings <laughs> in a few years' time. And finally, we're on to the music. We have our very mm-hmm. own effing hormone Spotify playlist. And it's all that, so we can get through it all, basically. 
I mm. absolutely love a collaborative playlist. I've just whacked a load of tunes on Spotify. It's open, it's collaborative. I mean, I picked a load of tunes because I cheated because I started it and Bean has picked a load of tunes, as have you, Terry. But I'm going to pick one song from that and it's Back in Black by ACDC. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes you just want a big bloody rock tune to express the pissed offness. And so there it is right at the start. Well, I, I had Killing in the Name by yes. Rage Against the Machine in mind. <laughs> and I listened to your playlist yesterday and I had a bloody good belt out to that. So thank you, Bina. Yeah. It was great. Well, if I was going to pick one, though, it'd be No More Drama, Mary J. Oh, Blige. That was great. Love I love that tune as well. Yes. Oh, like Mary J. What a legend. Well, funny enough, I had to look through uh, some of my favourite songs and, and most of the ones that I wanted were also quite rock heavy and male vocalists. And the first one I've written down is The Libertines, because I actually do love Pete Doherty in the way he just sings and he's a bit off it, really, and just a bit shouty and screamy. But The Libertines can't stand me now because that just sums me up when I'm having an emotional rage because I just must be unbearable to live with. So it's probably what my girlfriend thinks of me now. Yeah, (laughs) can't stand me now. Go on, Terry. You know what I'm going to say. Oh, no, no, (laughs) no, no. Are you seriously seriously going to do this? Oh, my God. Right, she's like, wait, 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 she's Irish. She's a, she's a singer. She's fantastic. She's got a very, very big following. And her name is Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else then. I was going to say, I was going to say Enya. Shh, 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 stop it. But, uh, I know it's been stop banned. It. So, Well, that's it. Thank you, girls. That's the end of Effing Hormones for this episode. Next time, you are going to hear from a woman who is known on Facebook as Totes in a Probes. She's a blogger on Facebook. She wears amazing clothes, often bought as massively cheap sale items. She also talks about living with peri and meno symptoms, her kids, life with her partner, and her pug dog, Trevor. Can't wait to hear all about him. It's also very funny. She's got 170,000 followers. She also set up a Facebook group for perimenopausal women called Totes Mary Perry, and you'll get to find out all about that too. Well, thank you so much for listening. And please get in touch with us at the Effin Hormones website, effinhormones.com. And if you have enjoyed this episode, please rate, review and subscribe to our podcast. And then there's much more chance of us being able to carry on. Thanks so much. Bye.